the ASME uh, already for a while and I have the pleasure to um, present to you the project development assistance um, today. Uh, as you know, the work program 1820 is on the horizon. Uh, the opening is coming very soon, in two weeks. And uh, I'm sure that you will be quite busy uh, if you're interested in the next months to um, develop your proposals. And I will uh, explain you a little bit what this PDA is about. Um, just beforehand, uh, PDA is not the only topic we have open for the call 2018. Here's just a very quick overview of uh, the topics. We have around 14 topics open for the call 2018 and uh, a budget of around 90 million to spend uh, in this year uh, with various types of actions. You see the innovation actions, but mostly coordination support actions. And there's also one research innovation action uh, open um, for uh, this year. Uh, there's also a digital, digitization topic open, uh, which is not done by us, but by, uh, by, DG, by the parent uh, DG Connect, and uh, which is about uh, smart homes. So um, if you're interested, then you can find all these topics um, on the H2020 participants portal. As I said, uh, you don't find the energy efficiency topics yet, but uh, they will be online uh, on the 25th of January. So um, I'm diving right into the topic uh, of PDA because the time is uh, limited. Um, project development assistance. That's uh, uh, what we have been doing already for quite a while. And what it wants to do is to create a series uh, of uh, investment projects, pipelines across Europe. Uh, it feeds into the Smart Finance for Smart Buildings initiative, which you might have heard of. It's one of these pillars, uh, which is called aggregation, where we actually need to uh, build the substance from the ground, so the projects uh, from the ground, uh, to um, you know uh, uh, go for funding, uh, to try to go for funding from uh, mostly leveraging in uh, private sector finance. Um, we have got a quite a long history of doing this uh, PDA already for a while. Um, 33 projects are funded so far, so there's a wealth of uh, projects and uh, if you are not familiar with PDA, I always recommend you to look at the projects and I do have a slide later on where, you, where I can direct you to the um, existing, ongoing and uh, closed projects, which is always uh, good to read to understand what it is and what we are going to finance. So. PDA is uh, topic E11 under the um, uh, in, under this new work program 1820, and as you can see, it's open in 2018, 2019, and also expected to be open in 2020. So, what is it about? It's about launching concrete sustainable energy investment projects. There's a focus, obviously, on energy efficiency and not so much on renewable energy. And uh, what we uh, do there is building technical, economic, and legal expertise. So what we have seen is that uh, a lot of municipalities, um, uh, but also private project promoters, have got an idea, but they don't know quite uh, to uh, materialize that. And the PDA is coming in to support um, that these kind of steps, which uh, um, lead from the idea to the concrete investment. So uh, apply uh, who can apply? That is basically public and private project promoters. So you have public authorities groupings of public authorities, you may have public-private infrastructure operators, uh, energy service companies, retail chains, large property owners and services or industry. So also SMEs can apply or large industries, they can in theory apply um, to this, uh, in principle apply to this uh, PDA call. Important here is that this topic uh, of PDA is open for one single entity. So if you have one idea, you're one organization, you can actually apply quite in contrary to most of the other topics where you need at least three beneficiaries from three different countries. So that's uh, uh, also uh, important to remember. Uh, PDA focuses on various sectors. Uh, as I said, uh, it uh, supports the Smart Finance for Smart Buildings initiative from the Commission. And therefore, one of the key targets is existing public and private buildings, including social housing. So uh, the rationale, as you know, is that uh, the building stock in Europe consumes quite uh, uh, a lot of energy 
And uh, if we get this housing stock right, uh, then we can also uh, uh, easily achieve our European energy and climate targets uh, in 2020, but also in 2030 and beyond. Apart from this uh, buildings uh, sector, we have got also street lighting. We've got water and waste service, waste water services, which is uh, new this year. And we've got the retrofitting of existing district heating and cooling, industry and services, and urban mobility. Uh, important is uh, for you to understand that uh, we to always talk about existing uh, infrastructure, existing buildings, existing dis district heating and cooling. We are not supporting the development of a new build or new district heating and cooling systems. So it's really about making the existing infrastructure more energy efficient. And uh, to illustrate the main features of uh, the project development assistance, uh, so it, the key important thing is for you to understand that at the end of the action, you have to have the investment delivered. So that means at the end of the uh, contract, you have to have signed uh, contracts with works companies, where, um, you know, installers, um, uh, refurbishment companies uh, for the plan for stable energy investment. Uh, there could be also energy performance contracts, turnkey contracts, something like that we need to uh, have at the end of the projects so that we are very confident that the project uh, investment is actually going ahead. The other important feature is that for each uh, million of EU support, you need to trigger at least 15 million of investments. So if you're asking for a million uh, of support from the um, from PDA, and since it's a coordination and support action, it's 100% supported by the European Union. So uh, if you've got a project budget of 1 million, uh, we expect you to trigger at least 15 million of energy-related investments. What we're also looking uh, for is an exemplary showcase dimension. Um, that means uh, uh, in terms of an ambition, for example, a high energy saving ambition, um, deep retrofit, for example, of buildings, um, or also in terms of the size. So it could be that um, you aim in your city or in your um, company for refurbishing all buildings, uh, all public buildings or all uh, buildings in a country or whatever. I mean, that is uh, also possible. Um, and it also should deliver organizational innovation and financial engineering. That's also an important aspect of PDA. So that means uh, we are looking uh, for um, more innovative financing schemes. It's not the usual loan, uh, you know, f taking from the bank or financing with own capital, what uh, public authorities also sometimes do. We know, especially the public sector, the money is scarce, so and the public authorities are not able to finance all the possible and economical energy saving investments. So therefore, we're looking at um, um, uh, in, in, uh, innovation around uh, the financing. So that means uh, on-bill financing schemes, guarantee funds, factoring funds, energy performance contracting. Uh, that's uh, um, the kind of uh, uh, financing that we are looking at in principle. In terms of organization innovation, it, it could be also uh, in terms of the mobilization of the investment program, bundling, pooling. Uh, is, uh, are the keywords here, especially um, bundling uh, for if you've got smaller assets, uh, which is not very attractive maybe for investors, you can bundle it with other um, stakeholders together and make this package attractive for investors. So bundling is a, a classic case which we have seen in the past projects and which is working very well. Um, you should also demonstrate in your proposal a high degree of replicability. That means, in principle, that we have uh, for um, this uh, call, we have, I think, 8 million euros, if I remember rightly, uh, for the PDA topic. Uh, let's check. Uh, I'm just uh, double checking. Um, and uh, so there's quite, uh, there's quite some money there available. But uh, if we consider that, for example, the Covenant of Mayors, uh, there are uh, around 7,000 uh, signatories with uh, around 5,000 uh, sustainable energy action plans. So you can gather that there is, in principle, a lot of critical mass. And even this PDA money doesn't really allow to fund all this. So therefore, we're looking really at showcase examples. 
which are highly replicable so that other municipalities, other project promoters can actually follow suit. So that's very important. And uh, as I said before, um, build on what we have already funded. Uh, you will see what we have uh, been doing in the past years. So always have a look at the uh, previous PDA projects. When we talk about investment costs, it's very important that uh, it's energy related investment costs. So that are directly related to or required for energy savings and or renewable energy generation. Uh, so basically if you do a, a, a refurbishment of a house, we do pay for all uh, costs that are related to energy savings, but we wouldn't uh, necessarily uh, do an overhaul of the kitchen or, um, you know, uh, the uh, the doorknobs uh, or the, um, you know, the bathtubs or things like that. So that would not, that should not be included. Also, if uh, you uh, uh, can include VAT, uh, if you cannot reclaim it from your uh, national tax authorities. The size of investment we're looking for is uh, between seven and a half million and fifty million. And I also like to point uh, to the Elena program. I think there's a presentation just after me, uh, which is um, on, uh, which is also doing in principle the same thing as we do in, with PDA, uh, just on a larger scale. So they are looking, I think, uh, at uh, investment projects uh, of thirty million and above. But I'm sure the next speaker will talk about this. Um, that was a PDA. Uh, in a nutshell, um, you have a full PDA presentation from the last European Info Day, which took uh, place back in October, uh, which is a little bit more extensive. And I'll give you the link um, in uh, in uh, in a few slides. So I, I strongly recommend you that you can uh, that you look also at the presentations from the European Info Day on the energy efficiency call. Other topics of interest. Uh, I just want to mention very briefly, oops, there's something wrong. Um, uh, there should be more text. I don't know, you can't read it, but uh, that basically means I have to tell you. Um, integrated home renovation services is a new topic which we have um, now in um, uh, open in 2018. It's about the fact that we uh, have seen in the past that um, home renovation is quite difficult, quite tricky, and uh, to upscale that, it's often needed to have a more um, uh, uh, large-scale solution, if you like. So one-stop shops is here the keyword. There's a whole range of experiences, uh, for example, in France. Uh, in every region, almost every region has established a kind of home renovation service targeting either at single um, family buildings, at uh, multi-family buildings. I mean, it's very diverse. But um, it works quite well to have a central point which is um, offering um, the whole range of services to the customer, to the homeowner, from, uh, you know, auditing to design to actually organizing the works. That's the idea behind the integrated home renovation services. And of course, if you go to the um, H2020 participants portal on the 25th of January, you will find the whole description of this integrated home renovation service. The other thing I want to flag very, very briefly is that we also have uh, another new topic um, which is the European City Facility. Uh, it's a call which is running independently of the main call. So you've got a different opening time in August this year and a different deadline uh, on the 5th of February uh, next year. Uh, and what we're looking for is organizations, uh, well, a organization or uh, a group of organizations that will have to be able to set up a European City Facility uh, and deliver um, calls for proposals uh, to uh, public authorities on our behalf. Um, the idea behind this, we have seen also in the PDA that um, from the idea to the investment concept, it's a long way often. Once you have got the investment concept and you're just looking for um, the final strokes in terms of uh, um, getting an invest investor on board, um, and getting the works um, organized, um, it's a long way to that stage. And um, therefore, we have uh, decided to open up a new topic, uh, the European City Facility, which will deliver a cascade funding to um, the public authorities. So public authorities will be at the end, once uh, this European City Facility is up and running, be able to apply to this facility for lump sums uh, to develop investment concepts, 
which are obviously falling short of uh, you know delivering uh, the investment as uh, required in a project development assistance project. So that is complementary to PDA uh, as we see it. And um, if you're an organization who can reach out uh, very well to public authorities across Europe, who is able to actually, uh, who has got experience to run calls for proposals, then you might be interested in looking into this topic. It has got, it has got quite a significant money behind it, which is um, uh, the uh, which is around 10 million, I think 10 or 11 million. So it's it's quite a, a substantial piece of work here. Uh, more information and help is available on the participants portal. As I said, you don't find anything right now, but on the 25th of January, all the topics will be uh, available there, and you can browse through and you can actually start applying. You also find information on our EASME Energy Efficiency webpage, and as I said before, the Info Day uh, 2017. You've got the link here. Very important. Have a look here at all the presentation material, and. Uh, the final point here is uh, if you uh, are not familiar with PDA, you want to know what we have been funding so far, then you find in-depth presentations of a large number of um, closed and ongoing PDA projects on this link, uh, uh, which is the Energy Efficiency Finance Marketplace, which we held in 2017 uh, uh, last year. There will be a similar Energy Efficiency Finance Marketplace, just for your information, on the 21st of February. Um, uh, organized here in Brussels. Um, uh, the communication is being sent out already by the Covenant of Mayors because it's in uh, in partnership with the Covenant of Mayors. And um, well, you will get more information in the next couple of weeks uh, about this. Here are the links to the PDA projects. We've got we've got uh, uh, fact sheets as well, so you can uh, um, look at the links here. Uh, under the links here and you find all the uh, project descriptions um, uh, from H2020 and also the MLEI projects, which is the uh, same as PDA, which were supported under the Intelligent Energy Europe program, uh, if you follow the link here. Okay, um, just uh, the final word, uh, the call opens 25 January, the deadline is on the 4th of September, so it seems like a lot of time, but uh, actually from our experience it is not, so I mean you should really start early. Uh, with your research, look at what you can do. Even for PDA projects, uh, you need to do a, a little bit of uh, pre-steps. So, um, yeah, um, uh, start now is my recommendation. Thank you very much. Thank you for this uh, useful presentation with a lot of practical information. Um, are there any immediate questions from the participants? But just so you know, the slides will be disseminated. And uh, of course, the EASME uh, team are uh, are there for uh, to answer any of your follow-up questions. Ah, we have received one question. So, could uh, could be a single PDA proposal for many sectors: public buildings, public lighting, transport. So, could a PDA proposal um, focus on uh, various sectors at once? Martin, you can also uh, open your microphone and uh, and uh, answer the question. Uh, yes, uh, I just typed it uh, <laughs> in a haste. But yes, you can you can propose um, everything, um, but it has to make sense. And I just remind you that. Uh, we, every proposal will be screened uh, and scrutinized by three independent uh, expert evaluators coming from the field, and you have to convince them at the end of the day. Um, if you look at the uh, history of PDA projects in the past, I think you will find that there's not so much of a mix of different sectors, and that might be for a good reason, that uh, it's already difficult enough to focus on one area. Having said this, there are a few proposals that are trying to do that. So it's, as I said, it's, it's possible. Um, and you have to make your case in the proposal. OK, we have another question from Dominique. Could we receive the draft program of the event on the 22nd of February? Uh, uh, this uh, Command of Mayor's Investment Forum Energy Efficiency Finance Marketplace uh, is yes. happening on the 21st of uh, February. 
So it's the day before uh, the Covenant of Mayor ceremony in the European Parliament, which is taking place on the 22nd of uh, February. So uh, just to distinguish, um, yes, if uh, you know uh, the program um, should be available hopefully very soon, and all the registration links. I mean, EASME will send it out, the Covenant of Mayors will send it out, DG Energy will send it out to the mailing list. So I hope that you will get something by the end of the week or latest at the early ne next week on the program and the registration links. Okay. And then I see a question from Marco. Could PDA include also finance microgrids? Um, in principle, um, in principle, yes, if it's a district heating uh, cooling network still, it could be. But if it's just um, uh, individual ground source heat pumps, then um, the focus should be on energy efficiency rather than on renewable energy. So um, with microgrids, um, um, you should, uh, again, carefully read the, 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 the scope of the PDA topic. But in principle, we were, we were rather looking at uh, financing proposals which are looking at uh, district heating and cooling networks. Thank you for the responses. Um, any other questions, immediate questions? If not, we can move to the next presentation. Ah, we have uh, Marco typing a question, maybe another question. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Martin Abel, for your presentation. And uh, if you're available, please stay with us until the end. There, are, there might be some other questions asked to you or maybe, uh, maybe other questions to which you can contribute. Um, let's uh, move to our next presentation on the ELENA fund. I'll just load the presentation. Okay, perfect. So, Maciej Stepanski, you can, uh, you can open your microphone and share your webcam with us. Perfect. And we can hear you. Yes. Okay, very well. Um, so, thank you for, for inviting me. My name is Maciej Szczepański. I work in the European Investment Bank in uh, uh, Projects Directorate and uh, in Elena team. Um, and I was asked by Federena to, to give this short presentation on uh, main principles of, uh, of Elena. Uh, so the presentation, I think, is going to take uh, approximately 12 minutes. And please ask questions after the presentation. I'm, uh, I'm here to answer all your, all your questions. The plan is uh, to give you general information about uh, Elena and who can be uh, the beneficiary of Elena, uh, also the sectors uh, of investments uh, which, uh, which we support, um, what uh, uh, what are the activities uh, that uh, that Elena can finance? And uh, finally, I will try to briefly tell you in practice how to how to apply for financing. Um, so what is what is Elena? Elena was uh, established in 2009 uh, by the European Commission in. Uh, in cooperation with the European Investment Bank as a European local energy assistance. And uh, while the investments supported uh, by ELENA are uh, by their nature uh, local, the entities uh, uh, can apply, which I'm going to talk about later, are, can be nationwide ministries or energy agencies of, of a country. So. This is uh, this is a little bit of change in scope since uh, since last year. So the funding uh, of uh, of Elena comes from the European Commission from Horizon 2020 Framework Program for uh, Research and Innovation, uh, but uh, it's uh, the European Investment Bank who is managing it. So uh, we are uh, filtering the applications. We receive the applications. We 
we work with you on them, and then we submit the, the proposal to the European Commission, and the Commission is uh, taking the final call on uh, granting uh, financing or, or not. What is important to mention, but I think it's understood by, by the participants, is that it's a grant for preparation of investments, not, uh, not implementation. Until now, for uh, this uh, few years, I think uh, six, seven years of full running of Elena, uh, managed by the EIB, uh, there was 67 uh, projects. So some of them, they are completed, uh, some ongoing, uh, which uh, awarded 121 million euro, which should trigger almost 5 billion euro investments. So this gives you also uh, a view on what is the average size of a project. Uh, this uh, would be an investment of around 70 million. It's, it seems high, but, uh, uh, but as Martin before mentioned, uh, Elena supports uh, investment or investment programs from 30 million euro. And um, the average grant side is, size is 20 mil, uh, sorry, 2 million euro. Um, and uh, also this is related to, to the leverage factor, which I'm going to talk in a moment, uh, which here uh, on average was 40, but uh, minimum is uh, 20 uh, and 10 for transport projects. Um, from 2018, uh, there, is, uh, there is going to be more focus on residential buildings. It's uh, related to Smart Finance for Smart Buildings initiative. Um, it's uh, still to be decided, but probably there is going to be a slight change in uh, requirements for the minimum size of investments and, uh, and the leverage factor. Uh, the grant uh, covers typically up to 90%, and this is what we see in our projects, that uh, 90%, usually uh, the applicants want to cover 90%, but it's, uh, but if, if they wish, uh, it, it can be as well uh, lower. The budget allocation is not based on call for proposals. It's on first come, first serve principle, which may be more important for transport uh, projects because the transport budget is separate from from the energy budget, and uh, and it's uh, and it's smaller. So this uh, this may be of more relevance for transport uh, projects, but for energy there is a lot of a uh, lot of money to uh, 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 to get. So we uh, encourage you to to apply. Um, Required level of maturity is, uh, is an important thing when it, uh, while screening the applications. This is because uh, of uh, rationale uh, behind, uh, behind Elena is to, uh, to implement investments. It's not, a, it's not a grant for capacity building. It's a, it's a grant for technical assistance, which is uh, directly uh, related to investments in implemented on the ground. So we need to see at least contracted or in case of public uh, public investments uh, uh, tendered out uh, investments within three uh, or four year uh, duration of, uh, of Elena contract, three for uh, energy efficiency and four year for transport projects. So this is why at the application stage, uh, there needs to be a certain level of maturity of, uh, of these investments. So the probability of implementing them within, within this uh, time frame is uh, high. Uh, related to this is the hard obligation in a contract for achieving this leverage factor. And again, it's 20 for uh, energy projects, 10 for clean urban projects. Leverage factor is defined as um, <clears throat> the sum of investments implemented or contracted or entered out until uh, the end of the Elena contract, divided by uh, the grant, uh, the grant uh, obtained. Um, in case the, um, the leverage factor is not achieved, uh, the grant may be proportionally clawed back. Uh, there is a provision in the and the final beneficiary, what is important, and again, we want to see investments. So um, it 
doesn't matter for us who is implementing these investments as long as the technical assistance is um, is spent on preparing investments which uh, which are implemented uh, then who is actually implementing the investments is a secondary thing um, now who can benefit uh, from from Elena grant uh, traditionally it was uh, public sector local regional authorities now it's also as I mentioned before national authorities and uh, groupings of, uh, of such bodies uh, energy agencies groupings of uh, municipalities this is what we what we often see and uh, on the other hand uh, we have uh, from since last year also private sector is uh, eligible for financing uh, any private entity which is planning to develop uh, to develop eligible investments uh, financial intermediaries banks uh, who plan to um, to create a product for uh, residential renovations and uh, which uh, want to have energy audits as something extra in, in their product. We can finance an energy audits uh, if, uh, if banks decide to apply for, uh, for, uh, for Elena and take, uh, take our um, requirements into consideration. What is, uh, what is important in the private sector is that uh, first um, private entities uh, need, a, need a bank guarantee. The, uh, the good uh, thing is that it's an eligible cost which is covered by Elena. Uh, big uh, industries uh, falling under EPS directive are non, not eligible. And uh, finally Elena should not have a purpose or effect of producing uh, profit. Uh, which um, which may be something sometimes uh, difficult to assess in case of private sector, but uh, for example, for a retail uh, chain uh, which core business is uh, selling products and uh, it wants to um, invest in photovoltaics on the rooftops, this kind of activity would be something uh, which is not uh, not a core business of them, and then. This would be eligible. However, it's uh, it's assessed on, on case by case. Um, eligible investment programs in energy efficiency, as I mentioned, um, there is uh, there is going to be more focus now on residential buildings. However, all other uh, energy efficiency renovations are also, of course, eligible for uh, for support. Street and traffic lighting, uh, building integrated renewables, uh, mainly photovoltaics, uh, district heating uh, and cooling networks, uh, or local uh, energy facilities, uh, smart grids that support uh, energy efficiency. And then on the other hand, uh, we have urban transport and mobility. Here, the innovative uh, component is uh, is more important, but innovative understood uh, at, a, at a local level. So for example, for a city which already has uh, developed a fleet of uh, electric vehicles uh, with infra infrastructure, then buying additional electric vehicles, probably this kind of investment would not be eligible for MNA support. But for the ones who uh, uh, want to uh, change from diesel to, to electric or hybrid, this probably would, uh, would be a little. So it's all again assessed on the individual. Um, when it comes to eligible costs, Elena finances uh, on one hand internal staff, um, which the contract has to be um, clearly uh, clearly mentioned the amount of time spent on on Elena. Um, this covers also all obligatory social security charges. On the other hand, uh, there are external experts, uh, consultants. These are feasibility studies, market studies, uh, energy audits, uh, legal financial advisory, uh, everything which uh, supports uh, the implementation of, uh, of the investment program. 
uh, and the appli application process application process starts with uh, just sending us an email it's it, it may be in totally uh, totally informal way as describing what uh, what type of investments uh, you expect you plan to to implement and uh, related uh, technical assistance needs um, then on this uh, brief description it can be two pages uh, we can assess initially whether uh, whether this type of project would be uh, would be eligible for uh, for Elena financing uh, we send you an application form which is uh, around 30 pages document uh, which uh, describes in detail the planned investments and related uh, technical assistance energy savings uh, costs of uh, technical assistance and investments then usually uh, or actually never the first version of the application is the final one we we work with you together uh, to, uh, to to refine uh, to refine this application to we dig into uh, into details ask questions so maybe this process uh, takes a couple of months and uh, sometimes uh, sometimes it's uh, it's quite hard but uh, but when we get the final version of the application, um, I, I would say that the success rate when we submit the request for approval to the European Commission is, uh, is quite high. So um, after, after the Commission, after the Commission uh, agrees on granting the fund, um, we prepare the agreement, which is a framework, uh, framework agreement similar to uh, to all the applicants and uh, uh, after after the signature uh, then a program starts and runs for three years or four years for transport projects um, that would be it uh, from from my side uh, I would be happy to answer any of your questions Thank you very much for this presentation. So uh, we have received already two questions. First, um, so is it so uh, private and public entities can be combined in an, an Elena scheme, right? This would be the first question. That's an interesting question. Uh, actually, we haven't seen anything, anything like this, but I can imagine that. Um, there is a private. Uh, we have to have one uh, counterpart in, uh, in our uh, who is applying, who is going to be later responsible for um, for delivering the investments, for um, invoicing all the technical assistance, hiring staff. So there there has to be one counterpart, but uh, it can cooperate with uh, with municipalities. Um, I, I don't see I don't see any uh, any problem here. If if we um, uh, if uh, we were uh, I don't know maybe more more specific, then I could then I could answer answer the question uh, more clearly. But uh, in principle, there is no problem with. Uh, any kind of public-private uh, partnerships. Okay. Next question. Are new uh, energy? Know. Yeah. Sorry. I, I see also the, the the person who was asking is typing. Yes. Uh, but uh, okay. For the next question, are a new energy system urban model sorry applicable within Elena? Uh, new energy system urban model tests. Uh, I'm not sure about the tests part. Um, for sure, new energy system urban models would be if this is uh, if this is something innovative on a local level. But tests um, tests as such. I understand that they don't uh, don't lead to 
or not necessarily lead to uh, to concrete investments and for Elena as I mentioned what is important is that um, that there are investments implemented in, in this three year or for transport four year uh, time period so so uh, I, I I cannot under, I cannot uh, answer this question 100 percent if, if the question is if uh, some kind of pilot uh, projects uh, are applicable, are eligible under ELENA. This depends on, on their size. Typically, pilot projects are not very big, so I would imagine that um, uh, that this would fall out of the scope of ELENA. So the first question about pub private and public entities combined in uh, ELENA scheme has been clarified. So um, would a regional government, a regional government take, take up an ELENA? Could this entity give technical assistance to public bodies as well as to private sector, e.g. multifamily houses? So this is regarding the first question. Public bodies as well as to private, yes. Yes, the answer is yes. OK. Um, how much is Elena applicable deployed in Ukraine and South Caucasus, such as Georgia? For the moment, uh, we haven't had projects in uh, Ukraine uh, or South Caucasus, but uh, uh, but uh, these countries are eligible for financing. So, if uh, application comes from from one of them, we are it's going to be treated in the same manner as uh, applications from the member states. Another question is regarding uh, e-car sharing fleets. Uh, could could e-car sharing fleets be a topic in Elena under Elena funding? Um, e-car sharing fleet may be topic. Yes, e-car e sharing fleet uh, may be topic in Elena. Um, again, as long as uh, it's not, um, it, it it depends on uh, on the city. If the city already has a developed fleet of uh, e-cars or car sharing and this is just a simple tender then then there is no no room for uh, for Elena obviously but if this is uh, uh, something new uh, which which hasn't been done in, in, in such a city uh, then probably probably that could qualify for for Elena support Okay, thank you. So let's maybe move to the next presentation. If there are other uh, questions, uh, you will be, of course, uh, able to ask them to uh, Maciej Stepanski and the rest of the Elena uh, division. And uh, we will be disseminating the slides along with some uh, contact uh, details so that you can ask your follow-up questions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Maciej Stepanski, for the presentation. Please stay with us if you can, if you're available, of course, until the end. There might be some other questions. And uh, let's move maybe to a concrete application of the Elena Fund now. Um, from Ivan Prejule uh, in northwest, from the Northwest Croatia Regional Energy Agency. I'm just going to load the presentation. Hopefully the presentation will work without any problems. Ivan, you can open your microphone and share your webcam with us. And the floor is yours. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Uh, so, uh, once more, uh, hello to everyone from unfortunately rainy capital of Croatia, from city of Zagreb. I'm Ivan Prujul, uh, and I'm representing the Northwest Croatia Regional Energy Agency. Uh, firstly, just want to thank the organizers for the invitation and the opportunity to present one ELENA-funded project uh, during this webinar. Uh, so, uh, what I've planned to, to share with you in the next 10 minutes or so is the New Light project idea, uh, challenges and the replication potential for those of you who are thinking of doing something similar when it comes to the ELENA or PDA funds or bundling processes. 
So, uh, just before I talk about the numbers and the figures of the project, I would like to stress the idea behind the New Light initiative. Uh, what we did, we, we bundled many local authorities under one project umbrella. And uh, we did this for one purpose only. That is to uh, efficiently and effectively uh, prepare project and execute all project activities. Uh, this is the organizational structure of the project. And the key point is that Regea is uh, doing all the activities for the end users, local authorities, the owners of a public lighting. We managed to include also regional authorities that provide administrative help, but also secure co-funding of uh, project costs. I will talk about that in the details in a minute. Well, the objective of the new light uh, project is to trigger uh, modernization of a public lighting uh, for achieving energy and operational cost savings. Uh, so project started to roughly uh, just two years ago, and now we're in the third last year when we need these 20 million euro investments contracted. Uh, so it's going to be quite a busy year uh, ahead. It's 57 local authorities, and uh, it's, it's Elena facility project finance. Well, uh, we managed to secure Elena co-funding for all project activities. Uh, European Investment Bank is co-financing the project with a 90% cover rate, uh, 700,000 euros. And the uh, last 10% was secured by these two regional authorities, two counties. Uh, but by this, we managed to secure 100 funding, 100% 100 funding for the end users, for local authorities, making all project activities cost-free for them. So that was the key motivator uh, for, for those uh, who tried to communicate the project idea uh, two years ago. So uh, bundling, why bundling? Uh, well. By bundling these 57 local authorities, we managed to uh, lower the risk of the project. Uh, we managed to uh, secure uh, funding for the project, and uh, we managed to secure an easy way uh, for them to uh, reconstruct their public lighting. But the downside of the bundling is you have a large number of stakeholders. You have a long preparation and decision-making process, and the project management uh, and communication needs to be done daily for three years, so that's quite quite a challenge for us. Uh, when we're talking about the project, uh, project uh, is contracted in three years' time. Uh, the first phase of a project, so the project is divided in three phases. The first phase uh, that lasts a year or so, we did the energy audits, we did inventory, we did the, the baseline, we collected all the data and we analyzed all the data from the street lighting. 57 local authorities. After that, the phase two, the second year, we developed the model contracts. So uh, we, based on that data analyzed uh, from the field, we developed a design and build contract, energy performance contracting or public-private partnership contracts for, for them to use. Uh, and the phase three that we are now, uh, it's a pre public procurement process phase uh, in about a month's time or 45 days, we will engage in these uh, tendering procedures and we will then contract uh, construction of public lighting. So the key challenges at the beginning of the project is sufficient baseline data. Uh, cities and municipalities didn't know what's out there. Uh, the number of luminaries, the potential behind the, the, the public lighting, the potential of savings, uh, energy savings, uh, operational cost savings, that was uh, for us to discover. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a national methodology how to do energy audits and street lighting, so Regea had to come up with our own methodology. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have an ESCO market uh, fully developed in Croatia, so facilitation service was mandatory. It is still mandatory. Unfortunately, low energy prices, uh, when looking on, on Average, uh, average electricity price in, in the EU is more than 50% less. It's 8 euro cents on average. Uh, so that's quite a tricky, and that's why, because we have, we have a long payback periods uh, when it comes to investments. 
and unfortunately no projects to learn from no good examples no, no pilot projects just a few of them so that was quite a challenge for us uh, Ulite outputs uh, so we did uh, we collect uh, and the data from more than 70,000 luminaries in total that's more than 2 million attributes that we collected and analyzed and uh, based on this analysis we created action plans these are strategic documents made for each made for, for uh, customer made for, for each local authority and basically what's in this document is a summary of energy audit it's uh, uh, analysis of available funding schemes and uh, financial uh, instruments and then at the end conclusion uh, economically uh, feasible volume of investments and the optimum financial source or mechanism for them to use so th that was customized for each city municipality based on data that we have collected uh, well we at the first we, we, we thought okay we need to we need to do energy audits uh, in 57 local authorities and for that we developed GIS uh, tool that's that's kind of a digital application for the contractors for the energy auditors to use and they use that tool that application on their cell phones or tablets or whatever and they collected on site the data uh, it was automatically shown to us on a cloud base so it was quite of uh, ongoing digitalization of all attributes collected as they were collecting it that ensured a uh, very transparent way of uh, tracking the energy audits uh, if they are on time and uh, most mostly uh, we had a more easy way to analyze the most collected data afterwards um, these action plans for the cities and municipalities uh, the documentation where all this potential is shown to the uh, representatives and uh, it's kind of strategic document that they adopted on city council you like output the third is standard process uh, the goal is that all the investment costs will be covered by the energy savings uh, that was kind of a trick to, to uh, persuade energy to persuade local authorities to go uh, ahead with the construction and for that obviously we prepared the tender documentation I also I already mentioned these three types of documentation design and build that's the basic documentation there are two processes and uh, only one tender uh, is tendered out energy performance contracting and public-private partnership are more, more complex more advanced uh, schemes we support all public authorities in obtaining home financing and in Croatia there is available structural funds for, for them to use uh, not at the moment but it will be in about month time so we'll be doing these applications for all the public authorities trying to get that kind of funds uh, for the projects facilitation service uh, that was a very very uh, tricky thing to do uh, a lot of meetings uh, the numbers are here but uh, we did more than 300 bilateral meetings with all local authorities communicating the basic project idea then communicating all the project outputs uh, on, uh, basically on a monthly basis and most uh, uh, just want to stress that we did more than 30 meeting, meetings with the uh, ESCO marketplace from the beginning of the project and I think I need to stress that as uh, possible because uh, you need to include them as early as possible and uh, trying to uh, uh, motivate them and for the third part uh, part when tenders, tenders will be launched uh, what about the numbers in the figures uh, based on the action plans 70% of local authorities decided to go to energy performance contracting uh, other 30% decided to go to design and build unfortunately we don't have any PPP project but still this is a, a, a good example that uh, energy performance contracting uh, is okay it, they did understand it and they are uh, about to tender this process based on energy performance contract of 45 days uh, today operational cost is 5 million euros and we plan to uh, achieve savings about 3 million euros 
uh, so that 70% of uh, electricity will be saved and 70% of cost and maintenance will be saved also. Uh, simple payback period of investments is rather high, it's around 10 years due to a low electricity price and uh, economically feasible volume of reconstruction is around 9% with energy savings potential of around 7 what could I recommend to you all? Uh, try to cooperate on a regional level. Try to use regional authorities, if you have one, for a bundling process uh, to reach your economy of scale. And use standardized methods. We developed all this kind of standardized documentation. Methodology for energy audits, action plan, um, uh, energy performance contracting co contracts, uh, standard documentation. Use them because you will ensure lower costs uh, and uniformity of data. And consider when financing, when, when talking about financing of a project, uh, financial modeling, consider all financial models. Uh, Combine financing, structural funds if available in your country, as well as energy performance contracting, uh, leasing, uh, or something like that. Well, introducing these kind of new models of contracting takes time. So. Uh, Having in mind that uh, plan, plan ahead, plan a lot of time to communicate with them, to the local authorities, to the end users. Uh, uh, that's that's kind of uh, that's that's very tricky thing to do in these kind of projects. Also, communicate with the ESCO marketplace as early as possible. I inform them about the contracts, about the models, and the tendering procedure details, and the financial instruments. If you got one in your country, uh, the play an important role in boosting the ESCO market when the greater number of ESCO, bigger ESCO projects are planning to be executed. Uh, consider smart city aspects, aspects, aspects um, and consider all potential revenue sources uh, if, you, if you are looking at these kind of details, how to make it more economically feasible. Uh, communicate, communicate, communicate. Uh, we did a lot of communication with our cities and municipalities and counties um, because uh, they need to be guided throughout the process. Financing is just not enough. Replicability. Uh, so don't be intimidated by possible project size. We were, uh, but the biggest risks in these kind of projects lie in human capacity that is dedicated to the project. And prepare the communication strategy. Uh, prepare yourself for the meeting. Uh, for us, it was 57 meetings on a monthly basis. Uh, so we needed to, to prepare the communication uh, strategy uh, so to make a short and precise key project ideas. So knock on a thousand doors, be persistent, and uh, uh, failure do not take personally. So what to use Elena for? Uh, financing technical assistance. We heard, uh, heard a lot about this in this first two presentation. But uh, build in-house capacity from it um, and sustain that kind of facilitation service. That's what we're going we're gonna do uh, after the Elena. Uh, and build your network of external experts. That's kind of seed activity for the future uh, cooperation. Um, these external advisory services that we contracted during the projects now are advisory services that we use uh, for another kind of projects. Uh, this is the Elena team for the end. Uh, always contact us by an email. Uh, here is a web page also. It's not live yet. It will be in about a few days. And on the web page, you, you will be able to find all the details about the project. But uh, also, uh, as I talked about, the methodology of energy audits in English, they will be available for download. Uh, energy performance contract and templates, all the outputs that we produce will be available for you for a month. Um, that's, that's it. Elena, team. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan, for uh, showcasing this uh, successful uh, bundling approach and, and for providing as well some practical recommendations. So, uh, participants, if you have any questions, write them in the chat box. We have already one question for you, Ivan. Do you find mature enough your EPC PBB structures to develop an ESCO model for heating and cooling of public urban transport fleets? Ooh, uh, <laughs> uh, I would say no. Uh, 
because uh, we spent more, uh, more or less 12 months developing an escrow contract, an energy performance contract, and a public-private partnership contract for the uh, public lighting only. Um, it's quite tricky to copy paste that kind of contract for transport needs or everything needs to be custom made. Uh, legislation framework is different, uh, contractual models is different, uh, so uh, you can always download the two contracts, but uh, I wouldn't advise uh, to copy paste it for the if I understood your question correctly. We have another question currently being written. So this bundling project was the first of its kind in Croatia, right? Yeah, uh, that was a bumpy ride, I would say. Uh, we we communicate uh, with these local authorities on a regular basis. And Reggae Icons is for 10 years now. So uh, we had that kind of uh, opportunity or advantage that we communicate with them uh, and we communicated with them before the project. And the, the idea, the project idea, uh, we spent more than six months uh, trying to communicate the project idea, trying to get them under one project umbrella. It was a quite challenging thing to do. I think uh, the, the counties play a very important role. They also co-finance this project. They ensure this last 10%. So making uh, practically free of charge uh, participation for local authorities for the end users, and um, that's that's something that you need to be aware that it takes time to structure the projects and to get all these local authorities under one Elena or PA. Uh, thank you for uh, the, the answer. So there's one more question. Which are the main difficulties arising when dealing with local authorities? Oh, this is a, another, another a broad question. Yeah. A broad question. Well, uh, first of all, uh, majority of them don't understand the energy performance contract or the ESCO. Um, they never heard about it. So what we did, um, based on the energy audits, based on the data, numbers and uh, we did uh, this financial modeling. So, briefly explained what are the uh, what is the energy performance contract? What are the benefits behind it? And why is it cheaper than traditional way of contracting for contracting for public lighting? And uh, for that, we 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 spent maybe two hours on average uh, per meeting, and we held two or three meetings uh, with some, some local authorities trying to explain if what is what's the idea behind behind the ESCO. Uh, so it's quite a challenge. Uh, the the majority, ma majority of our activities were was uh, trying to explain this kind of financing schemes. So we spent a lot of time. Okay, so taking them by the hand and showing them everything from A to Z. Yeah. Uh, problem F roadmaps as well uh, aim exactly at that. So maybe we could uh, move to the final presentation from Ireland. Thank you very much, Ivan, for this uh, uh, presentation of the Elena project uh, called New Light. Stay with us until the end. If you can, uh, we'll have a final session for uh, questions right at the end. So I'm just going to load the presentation of Paula. Good morning, Paula. Your presentation is on. So this is Paula Gallagher from the Tipperary Energy Agency, and she will be presenting the Public Enough Energy Efficiency Policy Roadmap. The floor is yours. Thank you, Philippe. 
Uh, delighted to be with you here this morning. Um, so my name is Paula Gallagher. I'm representing Tipperary Energy Agency. We are a local energy agency based in Ireland. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year, so it's a significant milestone for us. Uh, we are a private, non-profit, public good consultancy, and we work primarily in the areas of energy management for municipalities, um, along with building services engineering consultancy for the non-residential sector, and also um, we have a significant residential uh, deep retrofit program that we also run, just to give you an, a, a basic outline of what we do. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about the Hubblenough project, which uh, you introduced earlier, Philippe, and uh, specifically about the roadmap, the energy efficiency policy roadmap, which we are developing um, for public lighting renovation in Tipperary. Um, so um, I think you have introduced the, the project already, so I, I won't repeat it. Um, what I will talk about is the roadmap process within Pubblenough. Um, so just to introduce it, um, an exercise was undertaken between the partners where we looked at energy efficiency policy practices across each of the partners. Um, we selected the best practices um, uh, that we could find and we also at the same time looked at each of those regions to look at what the outstanding needs, the roadblocks, what were the difficulties in implementing energy efficiency practices. Um, to try to compile all of the best practices so that we could share them and try and uh, give advice and direction to each of our own public authorities. Um, but also when looking at the roadmaps to try to see are there best practices already developed, already implemented, which we could then apply to our own specific um, uh, roadblocks. Um, so for us in Tipperary, um, we uh, the, one of the greatest needs identified under the energy efficiency needs assessment um, related to the area of public lighting, um, which to date, uh, both within Tipperary as a region, but also nationally within Ireland, um, you know, work would have been pretty slow in this area. There are obviously a couple of leading authorities who have made progress, but um, there were a number of underlying obstacles um, which from the best practices and specifically, in fact, uh, the best practice from Regia uh, that uh, Ivan just uh, presented um, offers the opportunity for us to learn from um, and to try and adapt those. So uh, the, the roadmap which we're developing in Tipperary is to, and it is at an intermediate stage, um, it's not yet complete, um, but it is in draft and in fact, anybody who wants uh, full details of the roadmap, they are now available on the Pobblenough website and you will find the full draft roadmap for both our specific roadmap in Tipperary, but there are uh, another 14 roadmaps also across the Department of Countries addressing different specific areas. They just might be of interest um, to listeners as well. Um, so our roadmap for the public lighting energy efficiency policy is to develop the local policy, uh, the local strategy for public lighting, and to inform the national um, strategy at the same time. Um, it was to look at addressing the barriers to implementation, um, improving the knowledge, information, and to try and implement demonstrated solutions to overcome those problems. Um, so what I'm going to outline are a number of the key steps that we have undertaken in the roadmap to date. So the first step was to develop a strategy. Um, so very much along the lines of what I've uh, presented in terms of the key parts of doing your audit and your baseline inventory analysis um, and to take that overall picture of uh, to look at the lighting in the region and to set out a strategy for 2020, 2030, and indeed we allowed for the strategy to indicatively um, indicate the work that would need to be done for 2040, 2050. Um, what is key, I suppose, to the strategy is that it is part of a bigger program. Um, there is a sustainable energy action plan for the region. And one of the actions within that plan relates to public lighting and the need to um, increase the energy efficiency of the lighting. Um, so this wasn't a standalone action. It was a key integral part of the overall sustainable TIP plan for the region. Um, the strategy also looked at the design criteria for public lighting. It looked at the detail of the inventory and the baseline analysis. 
Um, and then it developed a number of retrofit strategies with detailed business case proposals to support it. Um, and because of the, the topic being public lighting, the asset management is obviously critical and integral to it also. Um, so this strategy we developed in conjunction with the municipality and um, we obviously needed to go through that process of com communication um, to have it adapted as the strategy for the county. Um, one of the uh, items I suppose within the strategy then when it came to look at the financing aspects of it was the need for technical assistance um, and we realised again that to support the actions both within the public lighting strategy but the overall sustainable energy action plan for Tipperary, we were going to need assistance and Elena, we felt, offered us that opportunity. Um, so we applied and were successful last year um, for a number of measures um, and again the aggregation of measures is critical and key to it, that the public lighting on its own within the region would not have been sufficient. Um, so we have a number of other measures also included um, that were successful in the ELENA application, for, but for the purposes of this roadmap, um, we received uh, 150,000 of technical assistance support towards the public lighting refurbishment within the county. And this will provide us technical assistance to help the replacement of 4,000 street lights. Um, focusing on replacement of the, the highest uh, energy consuming lights in the county, so 150 watt to 400 watt sun socks MBS lighting to change out to LED. And included in the strategy is dimming and trimming as appropriate. Um, so that was one of the key steps um, that we have undertaken so far in the strategy that has helped us to overcome one of the critical obstacles. We also developed a target indicator tool. Um, so this was essentially to make the uh, make the, the, the distance to the target needed to be achieved more visible and clear to the municipality so that they could see at any one point in time how much work they had done, how much savings had been delivered, and what the remaining balance was. Um, and we presented that um, uh, the tool in such a way that it could be modified, but it, 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 it clearly outlines the 2020 target, it goes to 2030, 40 and 50, so that we are constantly looking at the, to the future and looking at the next scale of work that is needed. Um, and the tool is it's, it's quite simple, but it does provide a good picture um, to, to the local authorities. So again, that they can be thinking uh, when they're looking at their capital programs, how much of an investment they need to be making in the in the following years. Um, we have a number of demonstration projects now completed. Um, so within in 2017, the local authority undertook over a thousand lantern replacements um, throughout the county. Um, Critical to the process, of course, is the communication and promotion, and we have had the support of the National Energy Agency, who have supported the development of a number of promotional videos um, that can be used at local and community level, um, just to ensure acceptance of the change when it comes to the, the lighting itself, um, and it has been very positive and positively received to date. Uh, we've also worked on a number of technical position papers. so. In dealing with the local authority, um, as we work through the specific demonstrated examples, um, a number of key questions and, and difficulties uh, kept arising. Um, so to address them, we essentially uh, prepared position papers to, and they would have looked at the best practice across um, Europe. They would have looked at the best practices already implemented across the country and looked at the norms and uh, essentially given the local authority a guidance on what was acceptable. Um, and, and there were a number of areas on the technical specification of LED lanterns that they would have had concerns about. Um, and also, I suppose the other area that is it's a procure procurement strategy was another area that um, they felt would uh, that they needed additional guidance and assistance on. Um, looking to the future again, um, we key to the the roadmap, I suppose, is that we're not constantly retrofitting and that we are looking at future developments. Um, so we have prepared a number of planning or uh, policy input documents. 
um, to feed into the planning guidelines for the region so that future developments, new housing developments and new cluster rural developments are uh, specified up to the, the same level of what we are now retrofitting to so that um, future developments will, will meet the standard also. Um, and I suppose just to, to say that whilst we're working actively on the local programme, that is our role, we're also feeding into the national programme uh, for public lighting retrofit, uh, which is underway. Um, progress has been slow. And uh, I suppose what we would like to see our local programme is leading the way um, as a good example of how to overcome the obstacles. Um, but we are actively engaged with all the stakeholders at a national level um, to keep them informed of our own local programme and the progress that we are making. Um, the best practices, as I mentioned, from the Pubblenough, we have shared um, nationally as well, um, as they provide you know, some really good examples um, on how to overcome some of the obstacles. Um, and we've also undertaken a number of training workshops and seminars as well to um, uh, assist in just the, the awareness and, and sharing of the information that we now have as a result of the Pubblenough project. Um, and also for the professional development, I suppose, of, the, of the, those working in this field, um, it is one of the areas also identified that, um, you know, that the, the opportunity for training exists for them and um, because it's quite new to us and the technology is new and the retrofit strategies are new, um, it's something we're also conscious to work with the national program on. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's uh, all I have to say for you this morning, if there is any questions. Thank you very much for this presentation. So I have first question. So did this uh, current policy uh, roadmap, problem roadmap, is to a certain extent ex um, inspired uh, from the New Light Elena project? Are there aspects from that project that you've uh, you, that have been seen for you more replicable than others? Uh, were, was there any cooperation between the two energy agencies? Maybe you can give us a bit more details on how the, the process went. Yes, absolutely. Um, like we have worked closely with um, the New Light project um, because it was our source of inspiration to begin with. Um, so I suppose one of the key areas was on the Elena assistance. Um, we would have uh, spoken with Regia on a number of occasions, um, and they would have greatly helped us um, in making the Elena assistance application, um, because it was obviously new to us. In fact, the Elena is it's the first uh, Elena application in Ireland for energy efficiency, um, so they were a great support to us and helped us in that area. Um, but even on, as uh, Ivan will know, I have frequently <laughs> contacted him when we were looking at the various technical issues that would arise. Um, you know, they've been able to provide us with their advice and direction in terms of what they have already done, having been there uh, down the road before us. So they have given us their specific examples of, you know, technical specifications that they have used. And we have then been able to build them into our position papers going, you know, as, as part of the demonstrated solution going, this is what they're doing in Croatia. Um, here's what we propose we should be doing in Ireland. Okay, interesting. So this is a good uh, lesson uh, to be learned to ask for uh, help and uh, from other, uh, from other um, energy agencies who have uh, gone through the process. So there is one question. Um, besides the videos that have been supported from the National Energy Agency, did you also use other means for achieving social acceptance? Could you share a couple of ideas of hints and tips? Yeah, um, what I will say is, you know, it has been very positive um, and there's nothing better than the locals themselves telling the positive story to the next community who's going to receive the upgrade. Um, so we haven't needed to do an awful lot in that area. Now we would do, um, you know, in advance of work, so obviously people are notified. Um, and we would work through the local existing community network to deliver the message. Um, we we don't we haven't to date had a specific campaign uh, around us. We have let it be led from a local level, and it has worked for us. Okay. 
Um, I invite all the participants to ask their questions for the other speakers. I'll invite the speakers to open their webcams as well so that uh, we can proceed to the final debate uh, phase. Up. And to share your webcams with us for the final questions. So participants, this is your, your last chance to uh, ask your questions during this webinar. All the slides will be presented to you, uh, to, will be disseminated to you, so you will have a chance to, to ask your questions uh, later on as well. Um, so there was one question written, no, probably the presentation. Okay, so from uh, from my experience, Horizon 2020 videos generally suffer from one, from only a view, only a view views. Also, your video has only 170 views so far. What could be done in this respect? Videos also suffer from this, by the way. So this is a other question on what communication channels are best to be used in order to reach your your target maybe from the various uh, stakeholders uh, from the various speakers you can have some uh, some answer on this what communication uh, actions are best are most uh, efficient when communicated about your project Share one one detail. Uh, we recently hired a communication officer in Regea and started working working intensively on social networks, um, Facebook, etc. Um, I I didn't trust that uh, that kind of communication, but uh, for now it, it is showing uh, rather well. Uh, we are reaching for uh, this kind of information to to wider wider uh, audience, uh, but so. When talking about the, the new light, uh, when talking about the 57 local authorities, unfortunately, you need to be present uh, there. You, you need to go to, to the communities, uh, to the city council, uh, municipi municipality council, and you need to communicate a lot uh, face to face. Uh, something like Facebook can help uh, when talking about the video materials, unfortunately. Um, this is a regional project, it's not a national one. So taking it to the television or something like that would be, I don't know, a waste of money, unfortunately. That's that's my perspective about the regional projects. You need to go uh, to the community and communicate a lot. Yes, I, I would agree on that as well, Ivan. Um, I suppose it's what's appropriate to your specific audience um, is, is really what's key. Um, and on the other side, what is also interesting, I suppose, is that because the reception has been quite positive, um, from the municipality's perspective, they actually, not that they would be slow to promote it, but they will have a long list of communities begging for the upgrade, and they might not be able to commit to that yet. Um, so we haven't needed to push the promotion um, uh, side too hard um, and as Ivan said really communications on one-to-one -one and a community level is what has been key for us and what has worked so far. Okay so having the technical economical and legal expertise is not, uh, is not always enough. Communicating and uh, talking about it is also uh, crucial. Right. Uh, so we have some other questions coming in. Ah, yes, about the the, um, the already finalized uh, projects under PDA and Elena projects. Uh, there we have an invitation for Dominique to promote the results of the PDA and Elena projects.
And we have another remark, communication on local level. Uh, with local and regional stakeholder, is it possible and promising only in native language? Yes, indeed. Nobody, not everybody talks English. Um, so communication is, needs to be always in the language of the target. Shall I say something? Um, I can say two things here. Um, yes, please. Uh, one is that uh, we do promote uh, both uh, H2020 PDA and Elena project results. I mean, one good example is this energy efficiency finance marketplace in January, which I mentioned, where you have got Elena and the PDA projects uh, who gave an in-depth presentation on what they were doing. So these presentations are still online if you follow the link, uh, which we uh, gave, which I gave in the presentation. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we encourage our projects to, um, you know, present at at reasonable events whenever possible. And they do that as far as we are aware. Um, you know, they organize, uh, for example, also sometimes in Italy it happened a national um, uh, event where they presented a few um, PDA and Elena projects. Um, so it's it's happening. There's also, uh, if you follow the link to the project fact sheets on one of the slides, you will also find the final published reports um, published. Um, and you will find a link. They are usually located at the project website. Uh, so if you uh, follow the link, you will find the, the final reports, which in many cases are actually quite useful because they are rather guidelines than, um, you know, um, fancy um, reports, but they are quite useful and instruct instructive. And um, I think that is also relating to the question from Ottmar Schläger, Schlager um, that um, in our projects we ask the final publisher reports to be published in several languages. Of course, we cannot uh, cover all the 27 official languages of the EU, but uh, we are publishing it uh, in the main uh, five or six languages. So English, French, Italian, German, Polish, um, and uh, I've Italian. I don't know if I mentioned it. So um, that is uh, to overcome the barrier that uh, those who could replicate the projects are actually not speaking English. I, I also, uh, on my side, can add that uh, recently, just recently, we have uh, updated uh, project fact sheets uh, for completed projects. Uh, which you can you can see on our website uh, together with uh, an updated map uh, and location of uh, different ongoing and completed Elena projects. Uh, but uh, yes, this is also something that we are working uh, working on, and we want to work more to promote to promote Elena because uh, there is uh, there is really a big budget for uh, for a lot of projects, and we need to reach. More, more constituencies. Uh, it's great to see that more and more promotion of these, uh, uh, all these, uh, these operational and functional projects uh, will be done, uh, because as we can see during this, we, as we can, uh, we could see this during this webinar, uh, replication is feasible, and uh, we need to have more, uh, more lessons learned uh, out there. Uh, so we have one more question, another question on multi-sector applications. Um, this is regarding Elena financing. Uh, is an uh, application to Elena possible with sustainable energy initiatives to buildings and networks and also in the same application clean urban transport initiatives? Uh, yes, it's, uh, this is possible. Uh, we, uh, we have had this, uh, this type of uh, projects uh, already. Um, but uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, there is a separate budget uh, coming from different source for transport, separate for energy, um, we can, to some extent, finance uh, also small transport component if a uh, majority of, uh, of the investment program is energy efficiency. And then if, uh, if a small component of, uh, of a program is, uh, is a Related to transport, then uh, then it's possible to, uh, to 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 finance it without any uh, any issue. Um, if uh, 
if there is a big component uh, of energy efficiency, building retrofits or district heating, uh, whatever, and uh, similar size big uh, transport component, then uh, then we uh, then we ask you to uh, to divide uh, such an application into two separate uh, applications because there are also different requirements when when it comes to transport different for uh, for normal energy efficiency and uh, and this uh, this makes makes it uh, just difficult later to uh, to assess and to differentiate. Okay, I think we have uh, time for one last question. Um, Sivlas is typing something. I would like to thank the speakers for the, your presentations today, for the, all the useful information you shared with us. And um, uh, are the slides good to be disseminated? Do you want to make any extra modifications on the slides? If not, I will disseminate the slides, the PDF slides with uh, with David from Energy Cities. We will disseminate them to the participants, and we will uh, publish them as well on the websites and on the PubLNF website. We have one final question, maybe some other follow-up questions after that. Uh, can a public authority finance the project idea through Elena and then its implementation for private finance for energy efficiency program? So combining the two. Um, this, uh, this I would have to double check. We haven't had this uh, such a case uh, before, um, and I'm also not working in uh, PFRE. Uh, but uh, please uh, write uh, write me an email. Uh, and uh, I will uh, forward this question to, uh, to a colleague who is, uh, who is working in PFRE. Thank you. Okay, so unless there are no other last uh, questions, thank you to the speakers. Uh, thank you to all the participants uh, who, are, who joined us uh, today and who stayed uh, with us uh, until the end. Uh, of course, we will send you the recording. There is a recording of the, web of the webinar, and the slides as well um, will be available. Thank you, and have a great start of 2018 huh? with a lot of projects. <laughs> Thank you.